Hey, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Today's tutorial is on chest x-rays and interpreting them given by Marianne. Um, just a few rules before we start. For those of you watching via Zoom, if you have any questions that is relevant to what's being covered in the moment, just pop them into the chat. If you have any questions that can wait till the end, just pop them into the Q&A. For those of you watching on the Facebook Live, just comment your questions and we'll make sure that, that they're passed on. Um, that's all from me and I'll hand over to Marianne to begin. Thank you. Great, thank you for the introduction. Um, so today I'll be giving a lecture on understanding and interpreting chest x-rays, which is a, a key clinical skill. Um, I'm going to just start by telling you, you don't have to be you know, experts at chest x-rays in your first clinical year, like you will learn also throughout. Um, so yeah, so I'm a fifth year medical student at Imperial College in London and I just finished a BSc in Reproductive science, uh, Sciences and a, spe a special selected choice in medical education. Um, so yes, um, also I'm on Instagram at Marion Does Medicine. So if you guys want any more information about fifth year and you know, the future as a medical student, you guys can follow me on there. So let's get started. Um, yeah, the information contained is here is not uh, anything, you know, that you should use as a patient. This is just teaching uh, from student to student, okay? And the, the content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. Right. Uh, if you have any questions at any moment, by the way, guys, please just um, say in the, in the chat or in the Q&A, and I'll either respond to them at the end or at some point during the presentation. Okay. So what we'll be learning today is uh, we'll be learning a systematic approach to chest x-ray interpretation. And we will be applying the systematic approach to a few common conditions. And finally, we'll learn how to systematically present findings from a chest x-ray because, you know, in medicine, whether you're a medical student or whether you're a consultant, you have to be able to communicate information to others. So you should be able to look at the chest x-ray for the patient and then turn around and tell your colleague about it in like five sentences conveying the most important information. Um, so that's the three things we'll be learning today. Um, yeah, throughout um, in the middle of the session, there'll be a little quiz uh, where you can look at different cases and tell me in the chat where you think, what condition you think this x-ray represents, okay? And then at the end, um, your summary and questions and then feedback. So that's the plan. And the aim of the tutorial is to last one hour. So the first part of this tutorial will be the systematic approach to the x-rays. Um, so I'll be teaching you a systematic approach and at the same time going through a few conditions. So it means, we're not, you know, just looking at conditions and then looking at the systematic approach, it'll sort of be incorporated. So the first step when you see a chest x-ray is what do you always do when you see a patient or a report for the first time? As always, you need to check who did this x-ray belong to. You need to check that, you know, the patient details are actually Correct. This is what you do whenever you see a patient, whenever you see a blood test, whenever you see an ECG, anything. You just need to check that it's the right ECG that you're looking at, essentially, or the right chest x-ray. So check the patient details, name, date of birth, and hospital number, and check the date and time uh, when this film was taken. Because if you're looking at a, you know, a film from five years ago, it's not going to be helpful for you. So that's the first thing that you should be doing. Oops, sorry. And so if you can look on the system, if there's any previous imaging, imaging for comparison, because um, that can be useful, you know, if the condition has gotten worse over a year, for example, that can be useful information. And um, if you're in clinical practice, you can look why the doctor has requested this x-ray. For example, it will say the patient has a cough, so I'm doing an x-ray. That can give you, you know, some background information about the patient, so you can interpret it better. You can have a better understanding of the patient as a whole, not just, you know, the x-ray. 
Okay, so that's the first step. Second step, you have to check the image quality. So it's always important that you just have a little look around for the image quality, even though the radiographer who's doing the x-ray should also check as well, right? Um, so we're going to be using the acronym RIPE. Okay, so the four letters mean rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure, okay? So let me go through these uh, one by one. So rotation, you have to check that the patient wasn't rotated, you know, when he was facing the x-ray machine, because otherwise it's going to be asymmetric, right? So the medial aspect of the, clav the clavicle should be at the same distance from the spin uh, spinous process on each side. So let me talk about these complicated words quickly. The spinous process is the vertebral column, right? has different um, processes on each side of the spine, right? So the medial aspect, that's the, the halfway through the clavicle, okay? And it should be equidistance, so the same distance from the spine. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and okay, so that's moving on to inspiration. There should be five to six ribs visible. Uh, when the patient is taking a chest x-ray, the the radiographer will ask him, take a breath, okay? Um, so that's how you know that there's good inspiration, okay? Uh, then you want to see what projection is this film? So I have a slide next about projection, but essentially there's two direction, from behind or from the front, okay? So either the x-ray machine is looking at the patient's back or it's looking at the patient's chest. We'll talk about that in the next slide. And the last thing is exposure. So another word for this is penetration. So it means actually, is the x-ray strong enough? Is it penetrating deep enough to see all that you need to see, right? Because you don't want to just be seeing, for example, the heart. You want to see the heart, the ribs, the vertebra, everything, okay? So the, the check for this is the vertebra must be visible behind the heart, okay? But if it's too exposed, then you will see only the vertebra. You won't see the heart anymore. So it needs to be sort of like in the middle. Okay. Um, does that make sense for rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure? Um, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment, so that is good. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Again, I'm going to say... Um, the x-ray department should check the quality of the image, but, you know, it's good to have your own um, idea when you're looking at the x-ray as well. So let's look a bit at projection, because that's really important for later. Um, so there's two types of x-rays you can do. It's PA or AP. So that's anterior, posterior, posterior, anterior. Okay. Um, both are done in clinical practice, but the posterior anterior is most commonly done. That's because um, the film, so this, you see this big square is the film, and then this blue cone is sort of like the machine, the x-ray machine, okay? So the x-ray machine is shining onto the board, and the, the image is printing on the big square board. Does that make sense? Okay. This board here is receiving the image. Okay, so when the board is close to the chest, the image will be very clear about the chest, okay? Because the heart is really near the box. So this one is better because you can interpret the heart size. Can you see on the image how the heart is very clear? Okay, the heart is clear, the heart is a good size. We want the heart to be clear, okay? So usually the most common will be a PA, chest X-ray. In some cases, um, especially when a patient cannot stand up. Um, for a patient is very ill and he's in bed, for example. We can do a chest x-ray, it's called an AP chest x-ray. That one you can do lying down. Um, it's not as good to see the heart size. Can you see how the heart is very blurry? And it doesn't quite have the right shapes. Like it looks enlarged, even though actually it's not enlarged. That's just because of the resolution if you want. It's like a camera has the wrong resolution. It looks blurry, doesn't it? But it's still useful to have a look at the lungs. You can see the lungs perfectly. If there's a, you know, a chest infection, you can see it. 
So if the patient is really unwell and he can't really stand up, it's really good to do an AP chest x-ray. Okay. Um, okay. And the important thing, yeah, if it doesn't say on the chest x-ray, it's probably PA because it's the most common name. Okay. And an important check as well is that the clavicles will go downwards in a PA, PA chest x-ray. Okay. Can you see on this one I'm pointing at? That's because when a patient is standing up for an x-ray, they will ask him to lift his arms up like this so that they can take a good view of the, of the chest, okay? Any questions on this projection tool? Okay, let's move on to step three, the real interpretation part. Okay, so we've done step one that is just verifying patient details. We've done step two is that checking the, the x-ray has a good quality essentially, because otherwise there's no point interpreting it, right? And step three is the real interpretation part. We're going to use an acronym called ABCDE, which is, they always have an A2E acronym in medicine, but this one is a specific one for chest x-rays, okay? Um, so, it's A for airways, B for breathing, C for cardiac or heart, D for diaphragm, and E for everything else, okay? Or we'll see later, you can go on a different approach, is go, a, go on a journey down the lungs. So it really depends if you're more of an acronym person or if you're more of a visual person and in your head, you just go down, uh, go on a journey down the lungs, right? Um, but these might be the A, B, C, the A, B, C, D, E, May, might be good, um, good to remember if you're writing down, for example, okay? So an uh, important thing about x-rays in general, and usually all sorts of imagery, is that everything that's dark, it means it's not very dense. For example, air, okay? And everything that is white is more dense. That's fluid, that's bone, okay? So on a chest x-ray, the air in the lungs will be black, and the bones will be white, okay? Um, that's not always true with the CT scan, but that's another story, okay? So when you're looking at chest x-ray, always remember dark and uh, white and density and everything, okay? So this is a little anatomy reminder. I'm not gonna go through this in much detail, but Pay attention on how the trachea is entering the lung at the same, in the same sort of area as the blood vessels are entering the lungs, okay? Um, this is called the hilum um, of the lung, and there's one on each side. Um, the lung on the right has three lobes, and the one on the left has two lobes, okay? Uh, remember that as well, that's important. And the last thing I wanted to point out, oh yeah, the lining around the lung is called the pleura. It's very thin and it shouldn't really, you know, you can't notice it that much in the x-ray. Um, right, so if, if ever you're going through the slides later and you're confused about something that I say about the x-ray, you can always go back to the slide to check your anatomy to make sure you remember what's going on. Okay. So let's start our A, B, C, D, E by the airways. Okay, so the first thing in the airway that we're checking is the trachea. The trachea, as you can see from the anatomy slide, is the windpipe, okay? Um, you want to see, is the trachea midline? Is it in the center as it should be? Or is it deviated to one side or the other, okay? That's abnormal, the trachea should be midline, okay? Um, and then if the trachea is deviated, you look around for anything that could be pushing the trachea or pulling the trachea, okay? That can be a large pleural effusion or that can be pushing the trachea, okay? So a pleural effusion means there's fluid in the lining of the lung, okay? So this fluid will be pushing the lung away and will be pushing the trachea away from it, okay? So if the trachea is deviated, there must be a cause for it. So look for it, okay? So that's the first condition we're gonna be learning today is a pleural effusion. This is when you have fluid. It can be blood. It can just be, you know, any random fluid 
that's in the pleural lining. The problem is it's going to be pressing on the lung, it's going to be pressing on the trachea. It's not good, okay? Um, and the other thing that, another thing that could be affecting the trachea is a pneumothorax, okay? Um, that would be pulling the trachea towards itself. That would be different. And a pneumothorax is when you have air in the pleural lining, okay? So instead of fluid, you will have air in there, okay? That's usually when you have a stab wound, for example. That will be air entering. Okay. So this is um, the first example of a condition we're going to see on an x-ray. This is a pleural effusion. Um, as I said, everything that's white is less dense, uh, is more dense, sorry. Oof. Everything that's dark is dense, so that's the air. The lung is very dense, it's, white, it's black. And then this is the problem, this is the effusion, okay? So what is going on? There's a lot of fluid, so the fluid is opaque. It's a large opacity in the lung, okay? Any questions about that? If it was a tumor, for example, it wouldn't look like this because it would look like a small ball of something. This is clearly the whole bottom of the lung is filled up from the bottom up. And water is, is always at the bottom. It will never be at the top of the lung, okay? So this is water in the lining of the lung, the pleura. Does a does, uh, there's a question that says, does a pleural effusion always cause the trachea to deviate to the contralateral side? No, usually it's only if it's a very large pleural effusion, okay? Um, usually the trachea will be normal. Um, so if someone said, is the trachea deviated here? Yes, it's a little bit deviated. So you see how the trachea should be over the spinous, the, the, you can see here the spine and the spinous process here one, two, three, and then to create, instead of being calmly over the process, it's slightly deviated, okay? Um, as, a result, as a result of that, sorry, you can't see the heart at all. So you can't tell if the heart is big or the heart is small, you can't tell, okay? Because this whole part of the lung is filled up with water, okay? Um, okay, so that was A airways. You can see that the trachea is deviated. Okay, let's move on. The second thing you should check in the airways is the bronchi. So after the windpipe splits off, it goes to the lungs. We call this the bronchi on either side, okay? Um, and it, so the question is, can you see the bronchi? Are they visible? Are there any masses? Okay. Um, after you're done with the bronchi, you move on to the hilar structures. So that's the blood vessels and everything around the bronchi that are splitting off at the limit when they're entering the lung. So the bronchi are outside of the lung and then they enter the lung. So that's the hilar structures. You want to see if they're symmetrical or if they are, they, they are like any masses around, okay? Oh, sorry. Um, Yes, so there are many lymph nodes around the hilar structures, okay? The lymph nodes should not be visible. If there are lymph nodes, it might be a malignancy or it might be a sarcoidosis, okay? Um, so these are the two sort of important things you need to know about. There might be other reasons, but at this level. Um, uh, unilateral, it's more rare than bilateral. Um, so if you see a tumor, in the lung, there might be a lymph node in the hilum, in the hilar structure that's enlarged, okay? And if it's bilateral, it's a condition called, it, it may be, sorry, a condition called sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is when the lymph nodes in different places of the body just like flare up, okay? Um, so actually, this is what you can see here. You can tell, can't you, that there are big masses around the hilum, okay? Um, as a little point of interest, can you see the quality of this x-ray is very poor? It's largely overexposed, isn't it? So if you were to present this x-ray, you'd be like, okay, I'm looking at an x-ray from this, pa this patient. 
in terms of quality, it's suboptimal because it's overexposed. Um, it, it's too much penetration, essentially. Everything is too bright, okay? Um, so remember the trachea, the bronchi, and the hilo structures, okay? Any questions at all on airways? I don't think I have anything in the Q&A. Okay, perfect. And here you can see uh, the trachea. You can't see it very well because it's a bit overexposed. So you'd be like, oh, I need to request another chest x-ray that's better quality. But the trachea looks quite midline for the small centimeters that we can see of it. Someone said it can sometimes can be difficult to notice hyalur lymphadenopathy. Um, yes, especially because there's lots of um, like blood vessels in that area. So sometimes it causes a bit of like some patches when you're not sure what they are. Um, and also sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a lymph node or if it's, for example, a pneumonia or something like that. So it can be difficult. Um, so this lecture is pitched at a level four year three that is the first clinical year so if you're in your first clinical year and they're showing you an x-ray in your exam it will be obvious lymphadenopathy it won't be subtle okay um the only way to learn if it's if there's any subtle lymphadenopathy is to see lots and lots and lots of chest x-rays and to get used to them okay um yeah, so if you work on, if you go on placement on a rest ward, on a cardio ward, for example, you might see a lot of x-rays and learn from them. Um, but in your exam, don't worry, it won't be any subtle thing that you are struggling to see. It will be a very obvious lymphadenopathy or a very obvious uh, pleural effusion. Also, sometimes pleural effusions are very tiny and it's hard to see them in the corner. But again, this is not something you'll see in your year three exam. I'm not saying later on on your GP. Okay. Just in your year three exams, it will be very obvious stuff. Okay, so moving on to breathing. So we've done like the windpipe and everything. Now we're moving on to the lungs essentially. Okay, so we're going to look at the lungs and see if there's any opacity. If there's any mass, uh, so opacity means it's more white than it should be. It should be black and it's a bit white or a bit gray. Okay. So if it's, it, it can be a very round mass or a very visible mass, or it can be a consolidation. So look a bit fuzzy. There'll be a little bit of white fuzz in a corner, okay? So it's important, even at your stage, you must be able to have, a, uh, have an idea. Does this look like a mass or does this look like a consolidation? That means an infection and a mass will look more regular and a consolidation will be like more fuzzy, okay? even though it's not, it's not always that easy. Again, especially when you move into year six and junior doctor and everything, okay? But our, at our stage, you can, it'll be, it'll be easy to differentiate, okay? Um, so yeah, increased airspace shadowing in a given area of the lung field may suggest pathology, okay? So I'm going to show you what we're talking about when we talk about lung fields because it's a bit confusing. Um, okay, we're going to see two problem, two different um, illnesses in the lungs. Okay, but first, I'm going, just going to explain when we talk about the lung field, it's from the top to the bottom, and we always talk about three zones. It doesn't matter if it's the right lung or the left lung. We always divide the lungs into three zones. These do not correlate with the lobes at all. From a chest x-ray, it's impossible to tell, I mean, it's difficult to tell if it, which lobe it, it is in, okay? Especially between the middle and the lower lobe. It's, it's impossible. You would need at least two chest x-rays to be able to tell which lobe it is in. So when we're looking at chest x-ray, we never say, oh, I can see a pneumonia in this lobe. You will say, I can see a pneumonia in this zone. It means you're talking about one of the three zones of the lungs, okay? So the top zone, the middle zone, and the bottom zone, okay? Or the upper and lower, depends how you want to say it. Um, yes, yeah, so what do we have here? We have on the left, 
a lung tumor. And on the right, we on the right x-ray, sorry, we have a right-sided pneumonia. Okay. So can you see how these are a little bit different? The tumor is like rounded, and you can tell it's it's not just an infection. You can tell that it's well defined, okay? Whereas the pneumonia is just fuzziness that's filling up a space. It's filling up the space between um, you know two parts of the lungs, okay? Can you guys sort of tell the difference between the two? Um, otherwise, if we're going through it systematically, we can see on this one with the lung tumor, the trachea's midline, uh, it branches off, uh, yeah, it branches off fine, it goes behind the heart over here, all good. Um, and the hilum, they look fine. Um, you can, that's when it's useful to compare to previous films. You can check, for example, this zone of the hilum might have something, or it might just be a blood vessel, okay? You can't really tell. The thing is, you can look at a previous chest x-rays from like a few years ago to see if the lung already looked like this, then it's not an lymph node, it's definitely just a lung, okay? Does anyone see uh, the zone which I'm talking about? Because some people have told me previously, oh, is this a lymph node or is this, in this case, it's not a lymph node, it's probably just a blood vessel that looks like this, okay? What zone would you say the left, um, yeah, so the lung tumor, I would say it's in the middle zone, okay? Um, and the pneumonia is the lower zone, I would say. You can say the mid, you can say there's an opacity that's in, that's spanning the middle and lower zone because the pneumonia is quite large, isn't it? It's spanning the middle and lower zone, okay? Um, any other questions? Oh, the chat has disappeared. Sorry, just a second, let me get the chat back. How do you differentiate a blood vessel from a lymph node? Uh, you, you, you can't uh, at you can't from just a chest x-ray, okay? Um, if you look, I was saying, if you look at previous chest x-rays from a while ago, if you see it, if you can see the same structure, it's probably fine because a year ago the patient was asymptomatic and he was fine. Okay, um, it's it's probably beyond this. It's a good question because it's very difficult to differentiate a blood vessel from a lymph node. But um, it, don't worry about it. If there's a very obvious lymphadenopathy, like do you remember I showed you in the previous slide, you can tell it's a lymphadenopathy. Okay, here it looks. It looks like a question mark lymphadenopathy, but I, you can tell it's not as big as obvious as the previous one, right? Okay, so at the moment we've learned about a pleural effusion. We've learned about a pneumothorax that we haven't seen an x-ray of it yet. Uh, we've learned about lung tumors and we've learned about pneumonia, okay? So we're going to progress through our little A, B, C, D, E now. Um, oh, sorry. I have, we haven't finished B yet. So in the lungs, we're looking at any opacity, so any masses or any consolidation. Remember, consolidation is an infection, pneumonia. Um, the second thing, we need to make sure that the lung markings occupy the entire zone, okay? It can be quite tricky to see, but it's very important because if there's no lung markings, it will raise the suspicion of a pneumothorax. Okay, so we can see here, it's a very, very big pneumothorax. You can't miss it, okay. Can you see on the left lung, you can see lots of little markings are like white scribbles inside the lung. And these go up to the top and up to the bottom, even though the quality of this x-ray is not ideal again. I think there's a slight rotation in this x-ray, isn't there? It's not very symmetrical. Uh, okay, that's not the point. Yeah, you can see all the little lung markings on the lung, okay? Whereas on the right side, you can see this lung is just strangely dark, strangely black. There's nothing in it. There's no little scribbles. There's no little, you know, blood vessels or little markings. And then you can see this little ball here, this little stump. 
what is it? That's actually the lung that has completely collapsed, okay? Um, so a pneumothorax means a collapsed lung. And why has it collapsed? It has collapsed because there was an entry of air somewhere. So all this is air, but in the air, it should be in the lung. Instead, it's around the lung, okay? So that can be caused either by um, stab wound, that means the air from outside is entering into the chest, or it can be that the lung is punctured, so the air that was in the lung is now like outside of the lung into the pleura, into the lining, okay? So do you remember how pleural effusion was fluid in the lining? This one is air in the lining, but the problem is the air is so powerful, it's completely compressing the little lung. And this patient would have severe symptoms because his entire lung is entirely collapsed, okay? So that would be a severe right-sided pneumothorax. Um, yes, the trachea is slightly, you're right, just trachea is slightly deviated to the patient's left. You can see it, it's not exactly, actually the, the quality isn't perfect can't see too well, but I would say, I would say slightly deviated to the patient's left, okay? So the pneumothorax is so big that it's pushing the trachea away, okay? Awesome. I'm just going to get a little sip of this. Thank you. Right, sorry. Um, so we've done lungs, mass is in all consolidation and making sure the lung is here, making sure the lung isn't collapsed. Okay, that's the key thing about the lungs. Okay, then after this, we can move on to the pleura. The pleura is the lining that's around the lung, okay? Normally, it's not visible in healthy individuals, okay? You should not see it because it's too thin. But if it's thickened, then you can, sometimes see it on the x-ray and pleural thickening can be caused by mesothelioma okay so it's you can google it later but it's associated with um exposure to certain hazards okay so make sure you google it later it's quite interesting but it's beyond the scope of this lecture okay and as i said it's a quite a rare condition so i didn't include any photo of it just to not confuse anyone okay um Mm -mm -mm. Uh, there's this last point that's quite a lot of detail. If fluid or blood accumulates in the pleural space, um, this can cause a combination of both pneumothorax and fluid. So they would call that a hydro pneumothorax. Okay. It's, I don't know why I added this extra detail. For those of you that want a gold star in, on your exam, you can know that fluid is hydrothorax and blood is hemothorax. Okay. So that can be a mix of pneumothorax and, um, uh, and hydrothorax as well. Does that make sense? Especially, for example, in trauma, if there's a stab wound, it's likely there's a lot of blood and a lot of air as well. Okay, that's a lot of detail. Um, what is this x-ray trying to show? Clearly, the issue is on the right side, isn't it? And this looks like either pleural effusion or um, hydrothorax, hydrothorax, something like that. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we've done airways, we've done breathing, so that's all the lungs and the lung lining. Now we're moving on to the heart size, uh, to C, that's cardiac. So we'll start with the heart size. Um, in a healthy individual, the heart should always occupy like 50% of the thoracic width and no more, okay? Uh, if it's bigger than 50%, this suggests abnormal enlargement, which we also call, uh, call cardiomegaly, okay? Cardio means heart and mega for like a mega heart, so it's too big, okay? Remember the 50% because it's quite interesting, it's quite important, sorry. Uh, this rule only applies to PA chest x-rays. Why? Because we've seen that AP chest x-rays, the heart is just magnified, it's blurry, you can't tell what's going on, okay? So that's a very interesting chest x-ray. Can someone tell me in the chat 
what is this weird thing in the corner, please? It looks like a foreign body. Yes, it's a pacemaker. You're right. Okay. So I'm not going to teach you anything about pacemakers, but they're very interesting and they're visible on a chest x-ray. So you can see it. Uh, when you tell some, when you tell, for example, your doctor about a chest x-ray that you've just seen, you should definitely mention, oh, I can see the patient has a pacemaker on this chest x-ray. You can also tell them it's a two lead pacemaker. Can you see how there's one lead here in the atrium and one lead in the ventricle? Um, maybe I'll do another lecture later on um, about cardio stuff and pacemaking. Um, but yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, you can also see some little dots. They look like little buttons around the chest. Do you know what these are? If anyone can put in the chat. Can you see those little buttons? There's like two of them on here and one underneath the pacemakers. Yes, I think they're ECG leads, you're right, exactly. Because you, you know, ECG electrodes, they look like very small pegs on the skin. So that's exactly what they are. Great. Um, and so what can you say about the heart? It's, what do you think about it? Yeah, it's enlarged. It's, it's definitely taking up too much space. It's huge, okay. Yeah, it's greater, definitely greater than 50%. So that's, again, that's a very easy one. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not, sometimes it can be subtly enlarged. So like you can, this one is obviously enlarged. So if you get a piece of paper and put the markings on a piece of paper, then you can tell if it's 50% or if it's like 60%, for example. Okay. Um, moving on. Yeah, this is to show the pacemaker, okay. So after having checked the heart size, you should check the heart borders. So the heart border should be well-defined in healthy individuals, okay? Um, if you can't see the left border or the right border, it means that there's something in the way and this might be a consolidation, okay? So, oh, there's no example of that. Um, I think there's an example in the quiz later when we do the quiz, but the heart should be smooth, right? If it's not smooth, if there's something in the way, you can tell that you can't see the heart border, you can see something blurry, something white in the way, and that would be a zone of opacity. And that's going back to the lungs. Um, it's important that you check this because sometimes when you're going through the lung fields, the lung fields look fine, and then you look at the heart and you're like, actually, in the corner of this lung field, hidden, there's no opacity. I would have missed it if I hadn't gone through my A, B, C, D, okay? So always go through your A, B, C, D, even if there's a big tumor at the top, there might also be a pneumonia at the bottom, right? Okay, so we've done heart size, we've done heart borders, and there's um, mediastinal contours. Um, this is essentially around the heart. There's some tissues that can enlarge. Um, that's also an addition. I think you wouldn't see it perhaps at your stage. Just, just be aware of it. If one of the doctors says, oh, there's an abnormality in the mediastinal contours, um, then you can understand what they're talking about. But I've never seen anyone in the third year exam ask about mediastinal contours. Okay. Um, so this is what I'm talking about, the mediastinal contours. The mediastinum is the heart as well as the great vessels. So the aorta and the pulmonary artery, okay? You should always have a little window between the aortic knuckle. Uh, sorry, you should always have a little window in the, aorta, in the aorta. That's called the aortopulmonary window. If there isn't a window, it may mean there's a problem with the aorta or there's a problem with the pulmonary artery, okay? Um, that would be quite tricky to pick up, but well done to you if you pick that up in an x-ray in the future, the doctors will be very impressed, okay? Uh, any questions at all on the mediastinal contours? There's not, I wouldn't get too bogged down with it, okay? Um, I think this aortic, uh, aorta pulmonary window is a good thing to maybe check in the future. Awesome, so we're moving on to D, uh, A, B, C, D. Um, so A was airways, B was breathing, that's the lungs. Um, C was, 
was cardiac, so like all around the heart, and the diaphragm. So uh, you can actually see the structures below the diaphragm usually in the chest x-ray. So you can see on the right uh, the liver, so you'll see the diaphragm is slightly higher on the right, okay, because the liver is so big. And on the left, you can see the, st the stomach, you can usually see the gastric bubble. That's because in the stomach there's a tiny bit of air. And what color is the air again on a chest x-ray, guys? Can you tell me in the group chat quickly? Always remember the air is the air is dark. Good job. And the bone and everything will be white. Okay, great, awesome. So you will see uh, in the x-ray that I show you, there's a small bubble of um, darkness on the right, and you can see, oh, is that something abnormal? But no, it's just a gastric bubble. Okay. And there shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to see anything between the diaphragm and the liver. Okay, they should be stuck to each other. If there's a problem, um, there can actually be air between the diaphragm and the liver, so you'll be able to see a gap, okay? If there's a gap between the liver and the diaphragm, that is bad. That means there's air that's entered the peritoneum. It means there's a bowel perforation, okay? This is the only sort of gastro condition that I'm going to talk about in this chest x ray um, If a patient comes in with severe abdominal pain, they'll probably do a chest x-ray and an abdominal x-ray. And so the chest x-ray is just to check, is there a perforation? Because that's really important. You don't want anything. You don't want to be able to see the liver. It should be blending in with the diaphragm, okay? I don't know if I have a photo of that. Yes, there we go. So, uh, you can see, can you see the gastric bubble, everyone? It's on the left next to the heart. Um, it's just a little bunch of air that's in the stomach. Okay, can you all see it? Yes, exactly. Someone said pneumoperitoneum. Pneumo means air and peritoneum means the, um, you know, abdominal cavity. So it doesn't mean there's a pneumothorax or anything. It just means there's air in the abdominal cavity, which is very bad, which is uh, usually a perforation, okay? And so on the, um, next to the heart, you can see the gastric bubble on the left, no problem. On the other side, on the right, you can see the diaphragm and there's some air underneath the diaphragm where the black arrow is. That is bad. You do not want to see this air. You just want to see diaphragm is filled with white, okay? Perfect. Um, Yes, so in the diaphragm, you just want to check um, if you can see the diaphragms or not. And you also want to check the, cost, the costophrenic angles, okay? Um, that's where the dome of each hemidiaphragm meets with the chest wall, okay? It should be a well-defined acute angle, okay? I'll show you on the chest x-ray. Um, if there's no acute angle, so like you can see the dome doesn't, really like go down it just goes straight horizontally actually there might be a problem okay there might be something that's blunting this angle okay so what can it be the first thing it can be is pulmonary edema or uh, or pleural effusion that's just fluid somewhere so it means instead of seeing a nice dome and a crisp angle they'll be blunted okay the other thing it can be is lung hyperinflation. A hyperinflation. It means instead of having a nice dome, the lung is so filled up that it's flat, okay? And that is in conditions such as COPD. The lung, it is possible for the lung to be too full. And then the patient will have trouble breathing because they can't breathe any more air in, okay? So if, so it's very important, if you see if you can't see the angle is very acute, is very crisp, you have to see, is there fluid or is there hyperinflation? And the way you can tell is hyperinflation, you can count so many more ribs. Instead of having five and six, you can count like 10 ribs. You'll be like, wow, why are there so many ribs? It's because there's too much lung, the lung is too full, okay? This is what I mean. Instead of having a nice dome, um, you have sort of like a flattened dome and there's no really nice angle, okay? The lungs look just very stretched out and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ribs. Okay, too many ribs. 
Um, is there anything else you can see? This x-ray is slightly dark. I would have liked it to be a tiny bit more exposed because I can't really see the vertebra. It's, it's all right, but it could be a slightly bit more exposed. Um, I think, so someone posted in the chat saying barrel chest. Uh, I think that's correct, but I think barrel chest is something that you can see when you examine a patient from the outside. Um, I'm not sure it works for a chest x-ray. And then you can definitely, if you see a patient and you can see the shape of their chest, there's definitely barrel chested, but you might be right. It's for COPD as well. So that's very correct. Good job, guys. You guys know a lot about this. Um, I'm wondering if I have a second chest x-ray with the blunting. No, I don't. Okay, so we've done A, B, C, D, and now we move on to E, which is everything else. I know I usually hate it when teachers have an E that's everything else, because I'm like, that doesn't help, does it? Um, but it can help you be a little checkup in your head of anything else that you've missed, okay? So um, it's important to check the bones. Are there, are there any abnormalities, for example, a fracture? Um, that's, for example, a rib fracture. If you can see a rib is broken, you can be like, oh, actually, a rib is, bro is broken. Do they have a pneumothorax? Because when ribs are broken, they can perforate the lung, and then the lung is all you know, the lung is perforated, and then there's pneumothorax. Do you all remember pneumothorax? That's air in the pleura, okay? Um, so can you see any lung fractures, or can you see any lytic lesions? So that's when the bone is being sort of dissolved uh, by a tumor, okay? That will be a little bulge on the bone instead of a fracture, okay? Um, there's like tumor cells are growing on the bone and in the bone, okay? It can be quite hard to see, but just in case you spot it, maybe in the arm, in the shoulder blade and stuff like that, okay? Um, so bones, soft tissues, uh, for example, if there's a large hematoma that you can see. It might be a hematoma in the muscle of the chest, for example, but that might show up. Um, or you may be able to see some, you know, foreign objects like tubes, valves, pacemakers, um, um, ECG cables, okay. Um, in terms of tubes, you may be able to see, uh, sorry, in terms of tubes, it's important to remember the nasogastric tubes. You will very often be asked just to look at a chest x-ray, just to make sure that the tube is in the right place, okay. Sometimes they're not worried about the patient has a cough or anything. They're like, I just put a tube into this patient's stomach. I just want to make sure it's in the right place. And you don't want the feeding tube to be in the lung. That's the problem, isn't it? You want the feeding tube to be in the stomach. So that's a big, big, big mistake if you put feeding in someone's lung, like the huge mistake. So whenever they put a tube in, they will just make a chest x-ray to be safe, to make sure it's in the right place. Okay. Um, and then there can be lines or there can be artificial valves if someone has a new valve in the heart. Okay. And we've seen the pacemaker. Awesome, so I'm just going to move on a bit swiftly. I didn't realize time was running. So the method two is more visual. It's just you, you're walking on a little journey down the lungs, okay? In red, trachea, bronchi, hilum. Then you branch out to look at the lungs. Then you look at the lung pleura. So that's all very logical, okay? Nothing hard. Then diaphragm going up and then lung going back up. So and then at the edge of the heart, you can look at the mediastinal contours, okay? For me, that's really, really useful because I'm more of a visual person. So I just imagine myself walking down the lungs and remember the colors, because that's four separate categories, okay? And then it doesn't say here, at the bottom, you could write everything else. That's, you can check the shoulders, you can check the ribs for any fractures or anything. Okay, quiz time. So this is not an ABC quiz or anything. I'd like you to post in the chat if you have any ideas about what condition this x-ray will be, uh, this, what condition this x-ray is talking about, okay? So, x-ray one, you can post in the chat what you think, and then there'll be a little patient story, and then you can see if the patient's story confirms your diagnosis, or if it's your, actually the story is different, okay? So I can see some people are saying pleural effusion. That is very good. 
uh, I um, just someone said PE, and I think they meant pleural effusion. But when we say PE, we mean pulmonary embolism. So I would advise not to say PE uh, if you mean pleural effusion, okay? Um, because most people use PE to say uh, pulmonary embolism. That's a blood clot. There's nothing to do with the effusion, okay? So just remember PE is not pleural effusion. Okay, so the story of this patient is a 67-year-old male who has shortness of breath and a cough. Okay, but importantly, he has pain in his chest, which is worse when he breathes in. Okay, that means there's something. The reason he feels pain when he breathes in is because all this fluid is irritating his wall, his chest, wall chest. Okay, um, mm -mm -mm. when you examine him, there'll be stony dullness, okay, and reduced breath, uh, breath sounds. This is a pleural effusion. So remember, if there's a lot of fluid, it, when you percuss, it will be dull. Okay, that's the only thing you need to learn. You can learn about examinations in another lecture. Okay. So pleural effusion, that is good. Okay, so what do we think is wrong here? You guys can type, type, type in the chat. Yeah. Don't hesitate to type, guys. Yeah, someone is seeing a mass in the left lung. Consolidation in the left, I think you mean middle zone. Yeah, that's correct. Large circular opacity in the left upper and middle zone. Yeah, I think that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, very good. And someone says there's also nodules uh, somewhere, which I think I think you're right. Um, if everyone can see my mouse, I think this is a little problem as well over here, and a little problem as well over here. Okay, um, we'll talk about these later. Yeah, if someone said you can see the gastric bubbles, uh, the gastric bubble. That's very good. Um, before we move into the story, can someone tell me what's the big sort of like white lines that you can see over here? like symmetrical as well. There's big white lines. That's so weird, isn't there? Yes. Well done. That's the breast. So sometimes I was really confused the first time. I was like, oh my God, do they have like a double-sided like problem or something that's symmetrical? But no, these are just the patient's breast, uh, breast tissue that you can see. So if someone tells you, oh, this is an x-ray from a male, you're like, no, this is just x-ray from a lady. Okay. It's in fact, I might have put the, no. So this is a 71-year-old female who comes into the clinic with a dry cough that's going on for over a month, okay? And she mentions some chest discomfort, um, and she's more tired, she's losing weight, um, you know, she's not coughing up any blood, but overall this is really, really, really worrying, even when you just hear her history. She's been losing weight without trying, okay? Because it says it wasn't intentional, okay? And she's more tired. So if you hear that, coughing, lost weight directly, needs to do something, okay? Um, and on auscultation, um, they can hear crepitations, okay? And this is a uh, malignancy. Um, and I think there may be some metastasis in the other lung or some lymph node. Um, I think metastasis is what my doctor told me when we were looking at this chest x-ray together, okay? It looks like there's some mets already in the other lung unfortunately. Otherwise, the heart looks bit, like quite small even, looks good, trachea is straight, doesn't look like there's any fracture anywhere, okay? So remember, um, these are very quick questions, so we're not going to be going through every all the A to E in detail, but it's good to just be like, actually, after I've spotted this big tumor, let me just check if there's anything else going on around, okay? Um, yeah, can see the Mediastinal contours, everything else looks fine. Okay, perfect. So, what's going on in x ray number three? Uh, so, yeah, someone said, can it be cannonball mets? I think they are, yeah. Yes, cardiomegaly, that's correct. 
That's correct. Um, because you guys are very good, do you want to say in the chat um, what symptoms is this patient feeling and what signs can you see on examination? Because he has a very enlarged heart. Does anyone know? Yes, yeah, so when your heart is very large, it can't, it means it's struggling to do a good job. This is um, heart, it will usually be heart failure, okay, when your heart is as big as that, okay. Um, the apex beats displaced, that's correct. Cyanosis, hopefully not, because usually when someone has chronic heart failure, they'll, their heart is still sort of compensating, it's like used to it. If someone had like acute heart failure that would be cyanosis but because they've sort of had it for like months maybe years the, their body is sort of used to it so they wouldn't get cyanosis they would get breathing difficulties they'd be very tired um they would definitely have dyspnea that's shortness of breath especially when lying down that's orthopnea okay so i'm not going to dwell too much on the symptoms we have. then we have to do a rest a uh, rest for a cardio lecture that's confusing but uh, can you see gastric bubble, everyone? Can you see? You can see very well the bronchi here because the heart is so big. You can see the black bronchi. Oh, you can see the three branches. That's incredible. Can you see how this bronchi branches into two that then branches again and here as well? So very good bronchi. And you can see this costophrenic angle is very sharp. Very good. We like that. Okay. Because sometimes when people have heart failure, when they have a large heart, then there's, they develop um, pulmonary edema, that's fluid in the lungs. And here there's no fluid, it's all good, okay? Can you, guys, can you guys see my thinking in my head? I'm like, this patient has heart failure. He might have pulmonary edema as well. And I'm just checking in the angles, okay? Does that make sense if someone has... Um, seeing lots of ribs, does that mean there's some hyperinflation? Um, are we seeing lots of ribs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm seeing seven ribs. That's that's fine for me. Um, it's you're right. It's more than six, but clearly there's a very nice dome, right? So there's no hyperinflation here. Okay. Um, and there's no fluid. That's the most important. So if you see a big heart, think about me. Look at the angle to see if the angle is sharp. Okay, the costophrenic angle. Okay. And the heart does look otherwise like there's no, like the, the heart is smooth, the contours are not blurry, okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about anything else uh, about the, you know, the history, because you guys got it all. Okay, I think this might be the last chest x-ray. So if you guys want to say in the chat what you think is going on. Mm -hmm. Hyperinflation, yes. Do you see how there's a lot, lots of ribs here? Uh, flattened diaphragm, very good. So there's no nice dome. Do you see there's no dome? It's like really flattened. And you can always see the bottom of the heart, which is a bad sign. Yeah, I know. Someone says such large lungs, such long lungs. Yeah. And you can see the patient has ECG uh, electrodes, but also this time they have cables attached because in the previous x-ray with electrodes they had electrodes um, but they didn't have um, cables at all okay um okay that is good what what may be the history of this patient this patient probably um oh what is going on yeah and um, that's not have we missed something yes we have missed something guys uh, i forgot i didn't even look carefully at everything do you guys see the pneumothorax here this patient is hyperinflated because he's breathing too much because he's in pain because he has pneumothorax okay can you see it um i'm pointing right now at the lung border very very fine and you can see the lung border is just, okay, you can't see it anymore here, but you can see that on the side of the lung border, 
there's no lung marking at all, okay? So this is hyperinflated due to pneumothorax, okay? Um, I'm not sure if this is secondary or primary pneumothorax, I'm sorry. Um, but it's very important. Do you see how I made the mistake myself? I'm, I can see the lungs are very big, so I forget to check about everything else. I forget to check the trachea's midline. Oh, I can see a very good uh, aortopulmonary window here in the mediastinal contour. Uh, I can see the bones are fine, there's no fracture. Yeah, however, I forgot to check that the lung marking is extended to the right to the edge. They don't extend to the edge. They're, the lung is a tiny bit compressed. And you have to spot that because it's those little details that make a difference, okay? So you, next time you're checking lung markings, don't forget the lung markings like I did, okay? Perfect, ooh, another one, chest x-ray five. Let's go quickly over this so that we can finish off. What do we think is going on here? Is it normal? Is it just, ooh, is it just a bad x-ray? Because it looks like it's rotated, isn't it? Look how high his, high, high, ooh, look how high his left shoulder is. Looks like he rotated. Um, what are people saying in the chat? It looks a bit underexposed as well. I agree with you. Um, someone said right middle zone pneumonia. Yes. Does anyone see it? You can't conclude on which lobe it is at the moment, okay? But it's right middle zone. Um, did other people didn't really answer? I'm sorry if I didn't give you guys enough time. Did everyone else think the same? Yeah, Sabika is saying the lungs are not equal. You're right, yeah. Because if the lungs were white on both sides, it wouldn't be a pneumonia, right? There's an um, increased opacity that's sort of like very faint on the, on the right side. And this patient has a history that sounds like a chest infection, doesn't it? His oxygen saturation is 94% and he has a cough with green sputum and he is pyrexic, which means he has a fever, okay? So everything else is fine. Turkey is midline. The bones are all fine. Uh, the pleura looks fine. The angles look fine. So he doesn't, he doesn't have a pneumonia that's right next to his heart because you can see the heart borders. The heart size is fine, okay? So remember to always check everything we've talked about. The heart size is fine. The heart borders are fine. The costophrenic angles are fine, okay? Uh, someone says the heart seems pretty big. Oh, I think it. Mm, I think the heart is a is a good size, you know. Um, someone says if there's white on both sides, what would that be? That's likely means that um, this patient has a problem, sort of like in the circulation of his lungs, so that all the tiny blood vessels are dilated, which would be an pulmonary edema because it means there's this too much sort of like blood in the lungs. Okay. That's for a fifth year level, that's not for third year level. Okay. Um, I think if you put a sheet of paper onto the heart and then put a sheet of paper onto the chest and compare the sizes, like you, can, you can see you take a sheet of paper, put on your screen, fold it in half and see does it make 50%. I think it looks very good size. This heart is I think 40% of the chest. Okay. So, oh no, there's another one. This is going to go on forever. That's me. That's good. There's lots of practice for you guys, okay? What do we have now? I forgot what this is. Any ideas? Someone said it's overexposed. Yeah, I think I agree with you. It's very, very white. We can't see much. It's not very good. Do, 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 do. 
Ah, there we go. So that's the pulmonary edema I was talking about. You can see how all the lungs look white. And this looks like they're all very fuzzy white, as if there was a veil of whiteness in front of them. Does everyone see? It just seems like the lungs are not black enough. They're too white. They're like, like there's a veil or like cotton wool sprinkled on top of them on each side, okay? And that's very typical of pulmonary edema. Otherwise, you'd be like, oh, this patient has a double pneumonia filling all of his lungs. Like, no, that's not possible. Uh, here, the, the heart looks enlarged. No one has said. Um, the heart looks enlarged. And it just looks like there's cotton wool everywhere, isn't there? Okay. Um, yes, I just saw someone said underexposed, overexposed. Um, is it? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. It's underexposed because it's too white. Okay, if it's overexposed, it would be too black. Okay. And you can't see the vertebra through the heart. That's the sign. If you go back to my ripe slide, is can you see the vertebra through the heart? That's for exposure. Okay. Awesome. So that's the last part. I think I won't talk too much about it because it'll be more useful once you have the slide and you can do your own private study time. But essentially, when you're presenting a chest x-ray, this is what you need to say. You need to go through the same order as when you're interpreting, but before that, you need to say the main abnormality. Like, there's no point being, oh, so this is like the, the trachea is fine, like the diaphragm is fine, the heart contour is fine, and oh, by the way, there's a tumor, you know. You must start the presentation by saying, the main abnormality in this x-ray is, okay, there is a big lung, lung mass in the right zone, for example. That's very important. You can't wait until the end to tell them, to tell them that, okay? Does that make sense? Um, so this is a normal, uh, a, an example of a good presentation for a normal chest x-ray. This is a PHS x-ray of Mrs. Jones, a uh, Mrs. Jones, a 65 year old lady. The film is well penetrated and has good quality. You don't even have to say everything else. And you can say overall, this is a normal chest x-ray. Usually most doctors will be like, okay, cool. No need to say anything else. But if you need to say, for example, in an exam, you can say all of this, blah, blah, okay? Uh, I think if you'd be presented to a doctor, they'd probably be fine by overall, this is a normal chest x-rays, the lung fields are fine, the trachea is midline, and the heart size is normal, okay? But make sure you have a read of this in your own time. This is a way to word things that will make you go smoothly in exams. Okay, this is why I've taken a long time to write this presentation so that you can have a good example when you're presenting to examiners. Okay. So this is an abnormal chest X-ray. It looks like a bit of a pneumonia, doesn't it? Um, so this is a, this is my example of how I would present this abnormal X-ray. Okay. This is a PA chest X-ray of Mr. Smith, 60 year old man. The film quality is adequate, however, perhaps a slight rotation towards the right, okay? Which you can see his shoulder is too high on the left, okay? The main abnormality on this film is a large area of increased opacity in the right middle zone. Okay, here. And then you say the trachea was midline, the bronchi are normal and symmetrical. There's a small area of increased opacity on the left hilum. Sorry, on the right hilum, I will correct that before sending the slides. You see there's a weird area here that could be a lymph node, okay? But it could just be to the due to the general shadowing in this area, okay? So it should say the right hilum. There's no sign of pneumothorax, the heart size and the me mediastinal contours are normal and the right hemidiaphragm is raised. That's probably, that's either normal because the liver is very big or that can also be because of pneumonia, okay? Uh, someone says, could the rotation be due to the patient having a scoliosis? Yes, that's why it's important to check the medical history or to check previous x-rays. For example, if this patient was also rotated last year, it means maybe she has scoliosis, or maybe it just means she accidentally rotated when they took the photo, okay? Um, you probably can't tell from this one x-ray. And then you would say, to complete my findings, I, I would like to take a history from Mr. Smith, because otherwise I can't say my diagnosis, right? Take a full set of observations and perform a respiratory examination. This is really important. I think examiners hate it when you see an x-ray and you're like, oh, this is a diagnosis. You're like, please take a history first, just to check. You know. 
um, and examine the patient always, you know. Um, overall, uh, you can say overall this area of opacity would be consistent with a right-sided pneumonia. I think at this stage it's dangerous to be like, oh, like if you're a third year to be like, oh, I think this patient has pneumonia. And you can be like, with my knowledge, from what I can see, I think it pretty well looks like a right-sided pneumonia. Okay, you don't have to be 100% sure. But also don't be 100% like hesitant either, okay? You can say it would be consistent with a right-sided pneumonia. Nice, assertive, not hesitating, but also you don't think you're the, the king of the world, you know, you're only a third year, okay? So abnormal x-ray two, and this is the last thing before I let you guys all go. Yeah, 10 minutes late. This is a PHS x-ray of Mrs. Smith, a 60 year old lady. The film quality is satisfactory, okay? The main abnormality on this film is a circular area of increased opacity in the left lung, okay? A well demarcated area, I would say even. So you see, I'm not mentioning the small nodules, I'm just mentioning this big, obvious problem, okay? The trachea is slightly deviated to the right, away from the lesion, and there is a, there is a small area of increased opacity in the right lung field, uh, about the size of a coin, okay? And same on the top of the lung field, okay? There's no sign of pneumothorax, blah, blah, blah. Overall, this area of opacity could indicate a malignancy in the left lung with potential metastases um, in the right lung and the, the tracheal deviation is worrying, okay? I would investigate this patient urgently. You can see otherwise uh, lung, uh, the breasts and you can see the gastric bubbles with that, okay? Right, so I've done this whole last section without taking a breath. Okay, any questions at all? Um, you can post in the chat. Someone said, can you make a lecture about chest x-ray interpretation for fifth years and I'm a fifth year myself so I can't do that but I would love if a junior doctor could do sort of like and you know chest x-rays round two for experts you know but if you're in third year this is more than enough what you need to cover for third year okay um, make sure you phone the feedback it will take less than a minute and I would encourage you guys all to come and meet me on Instagram I'm going to put it on here at Marianne does medicine because I give sort of like little updates on my life every day and you can see what it's like to be you know in fifth year on certain specialties and um, I can I'm also giving more teaching on Instagram in different lives and everything like that so I'm gonna hang in there uh, I think one or two minutes uh, exactly I will exactly keep um, Stay on the call for a few more minutes in case people have questions um, or so you guys can fill in the feedback. It's really important that we get feedback. So please guys, I'd be really happy if you could feel, uh, fill in the feedback. I'm still here for questions if anyone has questions. Um, which someone said, which site do you recommend to practice chest x-rays? I think, is there one called Radiopedia or something like that? I actually have it somewhere in my guide. Um, you're right. Um, I would always recommend OSCE Stop and um, what is it called? Um, the, there's some good YouTube channels about examinations and clinical skills that are also very good and Radiopedia with lots of extra examples, okay? What are they, what are they called? Oh yeah, Geeky Medics, that's it, Geeky Medics. Oh, uh, uh, uh.